Hello and welcome back to the Coder's Legacy channel. In this video, we're going to explore how to use the Python library Beautiful Soup to extract data from HTML content. Now, Beautiful Soup is a very popular library. It's really great for web scraping for data extraction. And in today's video, we're going to find out why. Okay, so let's get right into it. This is going to be a very interesting video. We have some HTML content over here. I just wrote this out over here. Some some random HTML content so we could quickly practice on this content and then later in the video we'll move on to extracting data from an actual website. Okay, so the first thing you need to do if this is your first time install Beautiful Soup. Okay, Beautiful Soup 4. All right, that's the current version of Beautiful Soup, Beautiful Soup 4. All right, so just install that, then make the import over here. And just be careful when you're importing it because the names are a bit different. Uh, you install it as Beautiful Soup 4, but you import it as BS4. Okay. Once you have this done, import Beautiful Soup, which we're going to use to create our parser. Now it's very popular to use the variable name soup. Okay. When creating our parser. Now the parser, uh, a parser is basically something that parses through data. Parsing basically means to you know, go through something and then extract it, you know, perform some kind of uh, operation, some kind of processing on data. This is the data that we're gonna be parsing, okay? So the first parameter here is the HTML content that you want to parse, okay, which is this, all right? Then is the parser type that you want to use. Beautiful Soup comes with a few different parsers, but the one that's used most commonly and in the vast majority of cases is HTML, HTML parser, all right? So just use this one, and maybe in the future I'll make a video on a comparison between different types of parsers. Basically, there's a compatibility and a speed difference, but otherwise they're more or less the same, okay? At least I think so. Anyways, let's proceed. We now have a soup object, okay? And now we're gonna use this soup object to extract data from this HTML content. We've already fed it the HTML content. Now we're just going to extract the data from the soup object. Okay, all the data is now within this soup object. So let's begin. Let's try and scraping the title. Okay, this is the title in the HTML content. How do we get that? Well, I'm going to do soup.title. Okay, and then I'm going to print this out. Soup.title. And... Uh, did I make a typo? Okay, my bad. Remove that and put a dot. Okay, and now let's run this again. And this is what gets printed out. Okay, the entire title, this entire title gets printed out. We just accessed this entire HTML element. But the problem is that this isn't very useful. I mean, okay, we accessed the HTML element, but we can't really do much with this now, can we? So what we want is something like this, maybe. We want the text within that HTML element. So how do we do that? Well, in Beautiful Soup, whenever you want to acquire the text from an HTML, from an HTML element, what you do is use get text. And this returns the text from that HTML element. And this works on a lot of different types of elements. Like it works on title, it works on paragraph, and a bunch of other things as well. Let's just run this for now. And we can see that it prints out Coder's legacy tutorial, which is exactly what was here, okay? That text within this title. Let's try this on a paragraph tag. So we do dot P, okay? And this is going to extract the text from a paragraph tag. Let me just do this first. Okay, soup.p, let's print this out. It returns the first paragraph. Why does it return only the first paragraph though? We can see three paragraph tags in here. Well, that's because whenever you do it like this, whenever you do dot and then some HTML tag, it's only going to return the first element that it finds on the page. It's not going to return all of them. And I'll show you in a minute how we can access them all. Let me just extract the text first, Oops. just to show you that we can see. It says first paragraph. Let me just bring this up a little bit more. All right. So that says first paragraph over there. Now, how do we access all of these paragraph tags? Well, 
what we can do is p tags or p elements is equal to soup dot find all find all is a function and uh, there's also find uh, which is, does the same thing but it only returns one element if i do this for example it's only going to return the first uh, the first paragraph tag and let me just show that to you seeing is believing let me just run this and you can see that it returns the first paragraph tag so this is the same thing as doing something like this all right now let me turn this into find all and then print this out and look at this it prints out a list with three paragraph tags now if we want the text from all three of these we're going to do a for loop a simple for loop and then say p element in p elements print p element dot get text okay and then we hit enter and there we go we get the text for each paragraph okay and what else should we look at okay how about this you can see here that there are classes right there are classes over here so what is the purpose of a class well in html we typically use these for classification for example um well we use this with css a lot css styles you know those like colors and font sizes so we use classes to de determine which uh which paragraph tags for example should be red which ones should have red text which ones should have white so a paragraph tag with uh which is meant to have white text might have a, a class of white text and then the paragraph tag which is meant to have green text might have a class of green or green text or something like that so then the css styles are applied like that that's the purpose of them that's the backstory uh but but over here when we're scraping from our perspective we use the classes to identify which ones we should be scraping we can see three paragraph tags over here and two of them have the class first and one of them has the class second so let's assume we only wanted these th these two okay how would we extract the ones with the class first what we're going to do is remove this then p then class all right and let me just print this out uh, let me just show you first this is how we access a class okay i just printed out the uh, class over here of the first element because remember when you do dot p it returns the first element now we, we could you know um let me show you let's just undo this okay now if i do p element and over here i do class we can print out the classes for each one of them so this is the way we could uh, filter through them you know it, like if class is equal to first but honestly uh, this is a rather a naive solution there's this is us manually filtering but that's what that's beautiful soup's job right we shouldn't be doing this beautiful soup has its own inbuilt way of filtering okay so we're gonna use that what we're going to do is use this the class underscore attribute okay and we're going to pass in first over here and then print this out uh wait sorry print out p elements print this out and see this returns to us two paragraph tags these two right here see let me just clear this it's getting cluttered okay so as you can see this is a lot simpler than what we did earlier so that's the basics of class selection okay selection by classes in beautiful soup let's move on to hrfs hyperlinks basically now there are two hyperlinks over here one over here one over here okay now let's uh, try and access them okay using find all like this and it returns to us both of these but what if we only wanted the href within this div right uh how do we accomplish that so we could do over here div dot a and this is going to return uh wait that did not work hold on i was uh i, I mixed up the format there are actually several ways to extract data in beautiful soup what i was thinking about was this okay dot div dot a 
and this returns this one now. Now, if you wanted to, to do the same thing with find, what you could do is this, div, and then dot find a. All right, so this will give you the same thing. It's a bit lengthier, but uh, these are just different ways of doing it. Let me show you another way. Uh, or actually, before that, there's something else I want to show you. Let's assume that uh, this was also within a div, all right? So um, how would we, for example, find this one, this href? Like, let's assume that this, this over here has a class of example2, and this is example1, all right? Let me just clarify that a bit bigger, all right? So we have two divs here, all right, two divs. One of them is example two, one of them is example one, okay, the classes. So let's assume that we only want the href that is inside this div, okay, the one called example one. How do we do that? So what we're gonna do is class is equal to, okay, sorry, class underscore is equal to um, call example one, all right? Now this will only return to us the one that's inside example one. That don't it'll return the href that's inside the div with the class of example one. If I run this code, and this says a typo is in here. Why? Unmatched. Really? Oh wait, this is the stupid code runner file. Let me run this code again. Okay, there we go. Let me just clear this. All right, so you can so you guys can see it a bit better. Here we go. Okay. Now, if I change this to example two and then run it, we get the other link. See, so that's how we can kind of filter things. Now, this looks a bit complicated, right? It looks a bit drawn out and a bit long. So let me show you a different way. There's a third method in Beautiful Soup that can be used to extract information from HTML content, and this is one that I like a lot. This is used in other libraries as well, like Scrapey. Scrapey is also a web scraping library. So this technique is basically called CSS selectors. Now let me try to do the exact same thing right now, but I'm gonna do it with the select method, okay? So I'm gonna do div, then space, then a. And what this does is returns all of the hrfs within divs. But if I want the div, if I want the href from the div with example one, I'm going to do dot example one, okay? And then I'm going to run this code and it only returns the one from the div with example one. So as you can see, this looks a lot simpler, right? Now, as you can see, there's so many different ways of extracting data. And I was just trying to give you an overview over here, okay? A, a good overview. But if you want a very detailed explanation, uh, with many examples on each one of these. I'm gonna make a separate video on each one of these methods um, One on the find method and find and find all then one on the select method, you know CSS selectors I'll leave links to them in the description below Otherwise, I would recommend you guys subscribe to the channel for future content on beautiful soup All right, so there's just one more thing I want to do. I promised you guys I would show you how to get data from websites, right? Because that's actually the main thing we, we we don't usually have HTML content lying around unless we downloaded it from somewhere first. So what I'm going to do is use the requests library, okay? And over here, I have this website. Uh, wait, the recording area is a bit off. One second. Okay, here. Here's the website, quotes to scrape. And I'm just going to copy paste this URL. And by the way, this is a, a website that's, you know, it's a dummy website that was made to be scraped. So it's very safe to try out new things and learn on this website. Okay, so I'm gonna go here and then request, okay, requests dot get, and then I'm gonna paste in the URL to this website. All right, so whichever website you want to scrape content from, use the requests dot get method, and pass in the URL inside this method. Okay, it's gonna, gonna return a request object, then we're going to do request dot content and this is where the HTML content is stored so let's just um, try and extract the title just to confirm that we've gotten the data the title is there a title there this is the title inside the head so let's continue to use CSS selectors I'll do head then space and then uh, what was it title yeah title 
and then let's print this out. And there we go, it prints out the title quotes to scrape. Pretty cool, right? So we know our code is working. Now, with this, I'm going to end the video. This was, again, an overview on Beautiful Soup. There is a lot more to it. We're going to make more videos on Beautiful Soup. So definitely subscribe to the channel. Leave a like, leave a comment. If there's something you want to request for Beautiful Soup, then go ahead and do so. Uh, it doesn't really matter when you request it. Uh, we can, If it's a good idea, we can consider making a video on it. All right? So, so yeah. See you guys in the next video.